Hey y'all, it's Laura and welcome back to a Traveler's Notebook layout. Now I have two of these coming up this month. This is the first one and it's gonna take a more simplified look at a Traveler's Notebook, how to do a very quick, easy layout uh, using the Freckled Fawn January kit. The next one that will be up at the end of the month, I think it goes up on the 26th, so next week, Wednesday, will be a little bit more complicated and shows a little bit more advanced technique for traveler's notebooks because I've had some requests to see simple versus complicated. So I thought I'd give you that this month. So this is the January kit and it has a beautiful color scheme. So lots of this kind of pinky purple, magenta, if you will, some teal, some green, and some gray. And it is divine. It is a beautiful color scheme, perfect for the beginning of the year. And I decided to scrap some graduation photos. So this is my high school graduation. I have a photo at the top of one, uh, let's see, my parents and my grandma and at the bottom with just my parents. And the middle one is me walking across the stage. I was showing you the washi tape there because I peeled off that washi with the green stars, added it onto some white cardstock, and then fussy cut them out to use as scattering pieces. There is also enamel dots in this kit, but I really wanted those green stars and you'll see why. Now the last photo off to the right there is of myself and my younger brother, who is two years younger than me, but our birthdays are very, very close. And I love that picture of the two of us. And so that one's gonna get a little feature spot on the left side. Now in this layout, I'm using two by three photos, which are quite small, but I wanted to get quite a few of them on this spread. On the next layout, we'll be using three by four and three by three photos, slightly larger, and give you a little different look. So I can show you that you can use different sized photos on your layout. Now, a lot of traveler's notebooks that I see use one large photo on one side and then use the opposite side for a title and journaling. That's also a great idea. I personally don't print my photos to a four by eight size, which is the length and width of a normal traveler's notebook paper. And don't think that I can do that from home. I probably have to special order them. So I don't normally do that. I normally use smaller photos. I do sometimes use four by six photos or cut them down to like say four by four. That works too. But I don't normally use full page size photos for my traveler's notebook. It's just not easily accessible for me. I am adding in some washi next to this little floral strip on the left side. Now because this side of the layout is going to have my title, my journaling, and my feature photo, I'm paying a little bit more attention to the details on this side. The right side is more extra photos, so I will keep that side fairly simple. When I have a lot of photos on a page, I do tend to go a bit simpler. When I just have one photo, I tend to go a little bit more complex because you have the room for it more than anything else. So trimming off the extra washi and paper at the top. Now I've got a lovely little floral stripe down one side, my beautiful silver star background on the other. There is chipboard in this kit, so I'm gonna pull off a couple of these stars to begin and end my title. I am going to be using some beautiful little wood veneer letters. Now they're not in the kit, but they are in the shop and they're a really, really pretty font. And I have been wanting to use them for a while. So I decided this is the perfect opportunity because it's a formal event. So I decided to go with these really fancy looking formal letters. And I'm just gonna spell out graduation. So you'll see as I add them across that little strip there, some of them have loops and swoops and all kinds of pretty elegant lettering. And I really, really liked them, I thought they were really pretty. Now, quite often I will change up these letters. I will paint them. I will glitter them. I will color them with markers. I will do any number of things to them, sometimes even put Nuvo on them. But in this particular instance, I thought that the color of these wood veneer letters really reflected the skin tones on the right side quite well and sort of blended in with them quite nicely. So that's why I just left them as plain. I'm also gonna add these little stars in and around my photos on top of the white stars in the background. So it sort of looks like I've created my own background on this right side. Keeping it again, very simple, simple embellishing because I have so many photos on this one side. And I really didn't have a rhyme or reason to it. I was just trying to spread them out. So if they have kind of a random feel, that's why they're intended to be random just for a little bit of fun in the background a very subtle way of 
lightening up that right side. I've also added two word phrases on banners on the right side. One was a chipboard piece, one was on a Project Life card that I trimmed out, and they say the same thing, <laughs> which I just thought was a fun bit of repetition and kind of diminishes them a little bit. So it's not as big a deal. It's not as important as the title. It's not as important as the journaling. It's just a fun little bit of extra words because I am a wordy person and I love adding words to my layouts. So you will see most of my layouts have a lot of words on them. Now this little photo here, I did want to dramatize a little bit. And so I'm gonna grab a Project Life card and do something kind of sneaky. This is a two by three photo, but it is printed on the Canon Selfie. So it prints slightly smaller than two by three and I put a border on it and trim that down. So it fits perfectly on a three by four card when you trim it down just so, and then tape the other side right there. Bam, perfect frame for that two by three photo. All I did was back the photo with one side, trim it off at the right, and then stick the second piece behind, line up the borders and tape them down. And you have a full mat out of a three by four card for a two by three photo. Fun little trick. It worked great. I was really excited to get this particular color as the mat for this photo because I love this magenta color. It is making my heart so happy and I felt like it needed to be this nice bright color on the layout. And really the only color, the only way I was gonna get that solid magenta was with a pocket page card because there aren't any papers that are solid magenta, just the pocket page card. So it worked. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get everything taped and glued down off camera. And then we're gonna go ahead and add in some journaling and those final finishing touches that just make the whole page feel finished and complete. And that would be my scattering and splattering. We'll start with my T-square ruler though and add some journaling lines underneath of my photo. This is a quick and easy way to add journaling lines. I have had a few people ask how I know how many lines to add. Quickly, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I completely guess at how many I need and I am a writer so I am pretty good about rearranging my sentences if I see that I have two or three more lines to go and not a lot to say I can embellish my sentences with slightly longer words or slightly more words just by rephrasing the words or I can go ahead and shorten them if I see only have one line left I'm very good at that in my head if you are not good at that Go ahead and write out your journaling ahead of time on another piece of paper in a similar size space and that will let you know how much space you need. Just kind of pre-write. Now for my scattering, I'm gonna bring in these beautiful enamel dots. They're absolutely gorgeous. I'm not a huge fan of enamel dots, but I love the fact that these are brilliant sizes. The large are not too large and they go all the way down to teeny, teeny, tiny, which I really, really enjoy. So adding on some enamel dots, adding on some of these little chipboard pieces as well. Went ahead and put a Saturday over the top of the frame just for fun, just to get it used. I'm pretty sure it was on a Saturday. <laughs> Most of our graduations were at that time. And adding in these little enamel dots for my final finishing touches of color around the page. And then I'm gonna come in with some Nuvo drops and do some tiny, tiny little Nuvo drops around those enamel dots. Now, I'm not gonna use splattering on this one simply because it doesn't need it. I don't use it very often on traveler's notebooks or mini albums because it stays tacky long-term. And a lot of my pages in the traveler's notebook are outside of the page protector. So I don't want things sticking together. In addition to that, I normally use splattering to fill in empty white space around the outside of my layout or the outside of my clusters. I don't really have that on this spread. Uh, having a pattern paper background on the right, having mostly pattern paper on the left, and filling in everything in between. I really don't have a ton of space left, uh, or real estate really, to add splatter to, and I don't really need to. So I'm not going to. <laughs> I also went through and added some Nuvo drops to the background of the right side of the spread. Just some little tiny details inside of those white stars. And in the end, I really liked this effect. It gave it a little bit of a 3D look to that background that was particularly fun. So that's it for this one, guys. Until next time, bye y'all.